Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, which can be helpful for you, you can be notified about the same. Moreover, you can join our Telegram group as well. So there is a link of this very group in the description below. You can join this group for the free PDFs of these sessions. Many of you were asking for the free PDFs. So if you want the access to the PDF, you have to join this very group where you will get the access to those PDFs. So moving on to question number one now. RBI has come up with the scheme of penalty for non-replenishment of ATMs to ensure that sufficient cash is available to public through ATMs. What is the quantum of penalty which has been imposed as per this scheme? So we all have faced the problem where we went to the ATM but the ATM was out of service, there was no cash available and we have often faced this problem. So in order to uh, handle this problem, to provide the convenience to the customers, to handle the inconvenience caused because of the non-replenishment of the money in these ATMs, this new scheme has been launched by RBI where there will be there will be a penalty which will be imposed on the banks if the ATMs run out of cash. So let's see what the scheme says. So the very objective of the scheme is to ensure that sufficient cash is available to public through the ATM. So, when we go to ATM, we have a problem in ATM, we have a out of cash ki problem. Na ho. In order to solve this problem, this scheme has come up. So, it will be effective from 1st of October 2021. So, October onwards, this scheme will be implemented where the banks as well as the white label ATM operators should put in place a robust system to monitor the availability of cash in ATMs and ensure timely replenishment and avoid cash outs. So, we have already taken one of the sessions where we talked about the white label ATMs. So, I will tell you once again, the ATMs which are set, owned and operated by non-bank entities are white label ATMs. So, if SBI opens its ATM, then it is a bank ATM. But if any other non-bank, suppose, Tata ki agar hum baat kare, Tata Indi Cash naam se ATMs run karte hai. Tata is not a bank, okay, but it is operating a ATM. So that is a white label ATM. All right. So even uh, the, if there are banks or if there are white label ATMs, okay, the ones who are operating it, the banks which are which are putting in the money in those ATMs, all these banks need to make sure that proper system is there in place. To replenish the money in ATMs. ATMs में कभी भी पैसा ना हो ऐसी problem ना हाए. जब जरवत परे timely वहां पैसा पहुँच जाए ताकि cash out की problem ना आए. Customer को inconvenience ना हो. इसके लिए एक system place में रखना is the very objective of this very scheme. Alright. So the procedure is that the banks need to submit a system generated statement on the downtime of ATMs due to non-availability of due to non-replenishment of cash to issue department of RBI under whose jurisdiction the ATMs are located. So banks ko ek system generated statement RBI ki department ko issue karni padegi about downtime of ATMs due to non-replenishment of cash ki jab ATMs operate nahi kar rahe te kyunki unme cash nahi tha aur customers ko inconvenience hui. Iske alawa agar aap white label ATMs ki baat karo to jo banks un ATMs se paisa daalte hai unko bhi in white label ATM Operators ke behalf pe ye statement RBI ke saath file karni hogi. Alright. In case of white label ATM operators, the banks which are meeting their cash requirement need to furnish a separate statement on behalf of those operators on cash outs due to non-replenishment. Alright. So, bhalai hi wo bank apne personal ATMs ki to uh, requirement fulfill kar rahe hai. Lekin agar wo kisi uh, white label ATM mein bhi paisa dal dalte hai, us case mein bhi unhe us ATM ke behaaf mein agar non-replenishment hai, to ye statement RBI ke saath file karni padegi. Kab file karni hai, kab submit karni hai ye statement within 5 days of the following month. So, uh, if we start with October, okay, from October it will be implemented. So, within the uh, within five days of the next month, that is by November 5th, this statement must be provided to the issue department of RBI. All right. So, moving ahead now, what is the quantum of penalty? Main cheese aati hai ki banks to hai, ye follow kyo karenge? ATM mein paisa 
ए टी एम आउट ऑफ कैश ना हो जाए ऐसा वो क्यों फॉलो करेंगे क्योंकि अगर वो नहीं करेंगे तो उन पर पेनल्टी है क्या पेनल्टी है वो देख लेते हैं वॉट्स द पेनल्टी विच हैज़ बीन इम्पोज टू मेक श्योर दैट द बैंक ए टी एम्स डोंट रन आउट ऑफ कैश इज दैट इफ द ए टी एम फॉर मोर देन टेन आवर्स इन अ मंथ फेल टू प्रोवाइड द कैश इट इज़ आउट ऑफ कैश देन अ पेनल्टी ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड पर मंथ विल बी इम्पोज ओके सो अ फ्लैट पेनल्टी ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड पर ए टी एम विल बी देयर अगर इस बैंक के ए टी एम में एक महीने में दस घंटे से ज़्यादा टाइम तक कैश नहीं है टोटल एक महीने का अगर आप टाइम देखो तो आपको दस हज़ार पर ए टी एम पेनल्टी भरनी पड़ेगी इन केस ऑफ वाइट लेबल ए टी एम पेनल्टी विल बी चार्ज टू द बैंक विच इज़ मीटिंग द कैश रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ दैट डब्ल्यू एल ओके अगर वो वाइट लेबल ए टी एम है तो जो भी बैंक उस पर पैसा डालता है उस पर ये चार्ज की जाएगी पेनल्टी और बैंक की मर्जी है कि वो आगे वो वाइट लेबल ए टी एम ऑपरेटर से भी वो चीज़ चार्ज कर सकता है ओके इट्स अप टू बैंक दैट एट इट्स डिस्क्रिप्शन इट कैन रिकवर द पेनल्टी फ्रॉम दी डब्ल्यू एल ए ऑपरेटर एज वेल सो दिस इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट पीस ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन विच आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर सो इफ आई मूव बैक टू द क्वेश्चन द आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए दैट द पेनल्टी इज टेन थाउजेंड पर मंथ इफ मोर देन टेन आवर्स द ए टी एम रन आउट ऑफ कैश और राइट सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू नाउ Which says which of the following inflation statistics surpasses the RBI inflation thresholds? So we have been discussing a lot about the inflation statistics of every month. Okay, recently the July statistics was out, and we have seen the inflation coming back within the RBI threshold limit. So I'll come back to the question, but uh, just. Let's discuss first the retail inflation rate for July. So in the month of July, the inflation reached the three-month low level. So we know that in the month of May as well as in the month of June, it exceeded the RBI threshold. So what was the threshold? Two to six percent. So four percent me plus minus two percent was the RBI threshold. कि अगर दो percent से छः percent के बीच inflation रहनी चाहिए, ये RBI को objective रहता है. Okay. so in the month of may as well as june it exceeded these levels but now in the month of july it came back within this threshold but still to a towards a higher limit that it was around 5.59% all right so the cpi has cooled down a bit to 5.59 from 6.26 in the month of june so june se hamara kam hua hai aur rbi ke threshold limit mein hum aa gaye hain so why we have seen these rise uh, because different items have uh, the prices of different items have increased the inflation rates have increased be it food inflation be it food inflation it was at a record high levels but now they have reduced okay so food inflation component is to 3.96 which was earlier in the in the previous month at 5.15 so food inflation kam hui hai iske alawa fuel inflation bhi thodi si kam hui hai it was 12.68 now it has become 12.38 this is the fuel inflation then for inflation where we have non food and non fuel items it reduced from 5.9 to 5.7 so food inflation become we have fuel inflation become we have non food and food fuel items related inflation bhi kam hui hai jis wajah se hamara overall cpi kam hua hai thresholds ke andar aa gaya hai and we also have discussed about the rbi's monetary policy decision taken in this regard in the month of august so rbi has um, basically kept the rates same the stance has been unchanged okay accommodative stance and even it pledged to continue with such a stand if it stands if it is needed for our economy okay but it has increased the inflation forecast to 5.7% for 2021 to 22 iske alawa kitna cpi hoga uska bhi projection kiya tha rbi ki report mein maine ye cheeze discuss ki thi where i discussed about the monetary policy report so the rbi projected 5.9 percent for second quarter 5.3 for third 5.8 for fourth and for uh, the next year financial year 20 for the financial year 2023 quarter 1 it has been projected at 5.1 percent so inflation ke ye uh, projections hai okay so overall hame isse ye pata chala ki june mein july mein wapas inflation jo hai wo limit ke andar aa gayi hai the rbi thresholds ke so if i move back to the question now you know that 2 to 6 percent is the threshold so which of these surpasses this threshold this is within the threshold july is again within the threshold in the month of may and june it exceeded the level so answer is uh, that second and third are the ones which surpass this limit so answer is option c 
all right now moving on to next question and last topic of the day which says the limited liability partnership amendment bill has recently been passed identify the statements correctly related so we have covered numerous bills which have been passed hal hi mein kafi bills pass hue hain jinke bare mein humne discussion kiya hai ek ye bill aur hai jiske bare mein hum aaj discuss karenge which is the llp bill llp is basically a form of business okay the limited liability partnership so let's discuss about this bill a bit and then we'll come back to the question so L, what is an llp limited liability partnership isse pata chal raha hai ki partnerships uh, form of business se related hi hai ye lekin yahan liability jaake limited ho jati hai partnership mein aapki unlimited liability hoti thi wo problem solve ho ke yahan pe ek company uh, type of organization ka feature aa jata hai limited liability ka all right so llp is an alternative corporate business form that gives the benefits of limited liability of the company and it gives the flexibility of the partnership so aap फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी भी मिल जाती है कि आप पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म हो कंपनी फॉर्म करने के लिए आपको पूरे रिग्रेस प्रोसीजर के थ्रू होकर नहीं गुजरना पड़ेगा एंड कंपनी की तरह आपको एक बेनिफिट और मिल जाता है वो है लिमिटेड लाइबिलिटी का सो इट्स एन ऑल्टरनेटिव कॉपोरेट बॉडी फॉर्म टू ट्रेडिशनल पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म और राइट वेयर द लाइबिलिटी इज लिमिटेड टू द अमाउंट इन्वेस्टेड इन दी बिजनेस सो दिस बिल रिगार्डिंग दिस एल एल पी हैज बीन पास रिसेंटली द एल एल पी अमेंडमेंट बिल लेट्स डिस्कस वेरी ब्रीफली दैट वॉट आर द मेजर हाईलाइट्स ऑफ दिस बिल so it aims to decriminalize certain offenses and reduce certain penal provisions so ye 12 offenses ko decriminalize karne ki koshish kar raha hai bill ki criminal courts mein na jana pade aapko un offenses ko handle karne ke liye penalties wagera ke through wo cheeze handle ho jaye aur jo penal provisions hai unko bhi 24 se reduce karke 22 karne pe focus hai is bill ka all right it uh, focuses on decriminalizing the cases and those decriminalized cases will be shifted to in house adjudication mechanism rather than putting a burden on criminal courts so criminal courts pe burden kam hoga in house hi inka ye matter solve karne ke liye ek adjudicating mechanism hoga all right the bill provides the regional directors the bill provides that regional directors authorized by central government may compound any offense under the act which is punishable with fine and collected from the person suspected of committing the offence so a central government recognized regional directors authorize honge jo offences ko compound karenge ki is offence ke liye itna fine hona chahiye and that will be collected by the person from the person who has committed that offence other than that the bill provides for the establishment of some special courts which will help in speedy recovery uh, or the speedy trial of these kinds of offences all right and one more thing is that it increases the punishment for frauds agar aap fraudulent activity mein involved ho to punishment bada di gayi hai kitni bada di gayi hai imprisonment earlier was 2 years it has been increased to maximum 5 years and fine was 50000 which has been increased to 5 lakh okay for any fraudulent activity so objective is to make sure that you are not involved in wrong activities in fraudulent activities and lastly this bill also provides for formation of a small llp to so, small llps form ho sakti hain unke liye kya criteria hai wo is bill mein propose kiya gaya hai that contribution of partners if it is up to 25 lakh which can be increased up to 5 crore and turnover is up to 40 lakh which can be increased up to 50 crore so it's a small llp and uh, the central government will later notify the startup llp so startup llps ko bhi later on define kiya jayega so these are some things which have been proposed in the bill so basic objective is bill ka hai offenses ko decriminalize karna penal provisions ko thoda reduce karna taki speedy recovery ho sake in cases ki offenses ke liye jo bhi punishments hai us All right. So we discuss this bill uh, now, talking about why it has been proposed in order to improve the ease of doing business and bring positivity in the LLP ecosystem. So LLP के ecosystem को enhance करने के लिए उस area में अगर आपको अगर LLP के through business शुरू करना है तो थोड़ी ease हो जाएगी, criminal provisions वगैरह कम हो जाएंगे, easy हो जाएगा अगर कोई offence भी हो जाता है, so you can get an easy recovery by paying a fine rather than going through a rigorous procedure. So it will improve the ease of doing business thing. Okay, so the bill seeks to encourage the startup ecosystem by decriminalizing the offences. Special courts will be there for speedy trial of offences, and the increased punishment for fraud is with the objective of making sure that the businesses are law-abiding business, discouraging wrong practices. So this is the major objective objective of this bill. So if I move back to the question, all these three statements we have already discussed. 
that uh, what is an LLP, okay, what uh, it focuses on decriminalizing and reducing penal provisions and its objective is to ensure ease of doing business. So all these statements are correctly related. So answer is option E. Last question is also related to LLP where it focuses on some features of LLP. So which of these is not a feature of LLP? You can easily answer this. First of all, people may come, people may go, but the firm will continue to exist with so its perpetual succession. Moreover, it's a separate legal entity, which is different from its partners. Okay, it uh, can enter into contracts in its name. Moreover, the individual partners are shielded from the joint liability. One partner is not liable for the decisions taken by the other. So these three are the features, but the second one is not feature, which is uh, about unlimited liability. LLP ka main objective is that liability limited. Hai. Naam se hi pata lag hai. Limited liability partnership. Okay. So only second is not a feature. Remaining are features. So answer is option A. This was all for today's session. I hope you found the session to be useful. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.